Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Um, today, we are going to take the uh, Phoenix A320 once again. This time, we've got um, two new utilities. Um, by the time this video comes out, stuff, I mean, they've been out now. That is FSD Crew for Phoenix and uh, GSX. Now, um, <laughs> I actually streamed the, the release of both. I, once FSD Crew came out for Phoenix, I released it the same day. Or, uh, I uh, streamed it the same day, and when GSX came out, I streamed it the same day. Um, let me just say that on, on day one, on both products, I was extremely disappointed on how uh, how um, poorly made it was, or they were, um, and how disappointed I was compared to what I was used to in pre-2D, or prepared. Um, GSX has always been a great product, it's always worked fairly well um, before level 2 came out and um, and it just worked kind of like, like I said it worked really well FS Crew always worked very well I always loved FS Crew um, but we're gonna get a plane coming I don't take off and um, and the selling point for me with FS Crew was were two things one realistic procedures and two Real, um, realistic voices so um, you actually listen to a real person talking to you so to speak and not some random robot like with um, AI traffic or AI ATC or anything AI you know well guess what they did they um, changed the FS2 crew voices to an AI and so now the sounds the voices are absolutely unrealistic I it kills a murder for me so much and I am still very disappointed about that the rest of the stuff I uh, had an issue with uh, FS crew um, have now been fixed I mean there were some minor thing or I wouldn't say minor but some things that were I, I just can't believe how beta testers um, couldn't f or st I don't know I feel like nobody tested the product and said yeah it's good just because they were lazy to test it because there were so many things that I that were not right or didn't work well. Um, a big thing is, for example, the preliminary copy preparation. So when the first officer turns on the aircraft with the external power or AP, whatever, um, he doesn't wait until the aircraft powers up. And he uh, used to do the AP fire test immediately, turn the IRSs on immediately, and check the ECAMS uh, system display switch or the system uh, synoptic pages, even though the 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 uh, screens were still doing their self tests. You know that makes no sense. You can't check your oil quantities. You can't check your hydraulic quantities, and all this stuff. Um, if the airplane's not even powered up yet, so I was like, "How do you miss that?" Um, they fixed that now. So now the first officer waits until everything is powered up. So it's, that's about 60 seconds, so about a minute, and then he uh, continues with the APU fire test, the ADRSs, and things like that. So that that was a. So that's finally fixed, but it's still the voices are terrible. Um, they said they're making they're making an application where the community can contribute their own voices um, if they would like, um, and I, I find that's that's a good solution. However, I'm still disappointed that um, they couldn't do it from the get go. Like they could have said, "All right, we only have one voice." Like they could have made at least just one voice, like choose one person, and be like, "Well." Um, there are possibilities of adding more voices in the future, but here's one voice because that's that's what again for me at least a selling point is having real person or real people talking to you well I mean you know what I mean um, not having it sound like an AI so that's still a big gripe for me with as a crew but it's better now with the procedures actually properly functioning and yeah I'm, I'm okay with it now um, I'll use it now. <laughs> Um, though I'm still ha I still have to get used to the voices, and then um, the next thing with GSX is that GSX has also a lot of problems, and um, very buggy. It doesn't work perfectly. Although you have to, we have to admit that most of these things that we would like to see are all now placed on the aircraft developer or the scenery developer. So, for example, the jetways or the or where the vehicles come from, uh, or how they drive, whether it be on the roads, because that's what we would obviously want. We want the vehicles to drive on the roads, not on the taxiways. That is all now 
push to the scenery developers, which makes sense. The scenery developers have to make a proper AFCAD file, and then so GSX can read that AFCAD file, and then and then GSX can properly um, uh, or simulate realistic procedures. Now, when it comes to loading the aircraft with GSX, for example, real-time fuel loading, real-time boarding, and you actually see that happening in real time, just like in FS Labs. That's a thing that the aircraft developer has to implement with GSX. But those two things. Um, Obviously, on first day release are not perfect. Um, that's because we have to wait until scenery developers and aircraft developers implement uh, ESX into their products, so to speak. So I'm not too upset about that. It's something to expect. But um, the biggest problem I have with GSX is the fact that so many people already have problems with bugs and um, animations are not always perfect, um, at least very lazy in some ways. It's sometimes really slow. Um, especially the pushback. We're not going to use pushback for GSX. We're actually using Ultimate Ground Crew X for pushback. Or actually, that's not what it's called. It's called Pushback Express in MSFS, um, which is basically the FSD crew equivalent just for pushback, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, um, it's a bit disappointing. Both products are very disappointing. I also, at GSX, I didn't get to work in the beginning. Like, it, I had to sit here for two hours just to figure out how to get it work to work. Um, because it kept giving me an error that the uh, engine scripting didn't want to run or something and I, the w only way I was able to get it to work was to uninstall every FS Dream Team product I have including the ones from P3D and then I only installed the MSFS stuff again so the P3D stuff, so GSX for P3D um, all the airports I have from FS Dream Team for G P2D are all uninstalled so um, and that's the uh, that's how I got it to work. Maybe I can install those things again and it will still work. I don't know, um, but I don't want to risk it honestly. Um, so yeah, there's still some bugs anyways with GSX. Oh shoot, okay. There's still some bugs with GSX where um, when you open the menu, for example, it takes forever to come up, and if you don't touch it for a long time, the the window closes by itself. But then the um, menu still thinks GSX is open, so when you try to click it again, it doesn't open until you click it, because, I mean, you can see if it, when it's open, you can see how it's highlighted. And so eventually the menu goes away, and when it's closed, even though you didn't close it, it will still be highlighted. So what you, what you have to do is you have to click it again so that it's unhighlighted, and then you click it one more time to open it up again. There's also times where GSX just doesn't want to open at all. It doesn't give you an error or nothing. You try to open it, and it just never opens. Um, and that's also a bug that they have to sort because that's really frustrating if you're trying to, you know, if you are trying to go with realistic uh, procedures and, you know, trying to load the aircraft and have some nice animations, but then it doesn't want to load and then that's ruined for you. So a lot of things that GSX needs to improve on, um, or not just improve, improve means that that's already good, it's just they can make it better. No, they need to fix things. Um, and if it's a crew, needs to improve things for me. Yeah. So, not that my rant is over, and it's been 10 minutes, I think? 8 minutes? Um, yeah. Two products that I've always liked and enjoyed in P3D came over to MSFS. I was excited, and they definitely made me very upset. And, um, yeah. PMDG was actually one of them as well. PMDG also ha had uh, got me upset when they first released their 700 for uh, MSFS. I was upset with them as well um, for different reasons. But hey, uh, <laughs> I guess MSFS is not, or at least a, a lot of people think, or a lot of developers I think can get think they can get away with um, releasing products that aren't perfect yet, and that's because the market is so large, you know and people don't know what to expect. So many people will be like, oh, cool ground services, I'm gonna buy it, sounds cool. Um, but they don't know what what is actually good, you know? But whatever. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with FS2 Crew here. Uh, I got it run running. Let's start setting up. Roger. So he's gonna do his flows while he does his flows. So he's gonna do the power up. We will start with the uh, EFB here. We're just gonna go ahead and click through. To import. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of chocks and ch cones because I I'm just gonna, you know, I just wanna get rid of them because of the cones. Um, 
since GSX, or, uh, yeah, GSX already has cones for us. Um, another bug, as you can see, I think you guys can already see that. You'll see them with some of the vehicles as well. Um, that the uh, that some of the textures just don't want to load up at a certain distance, and then you can see once you get close enough, they actually load again. There's quite a bit of bugs with GSX. It's it's not cool. Um, so let's go ahead and request catering, just so we have something going on. We're gonna go lift the vehicles are on their way. There we go. Uh, here's another example. You can see here, the uh, even the uh, the. Here, let me try it. Okay, I can only. Sorry, I can't zoom out anymore. Otherwise, you probably won't notice. But you can see how the polygons also get very low, um, and the texture completely disappears. I would hope that with ground services that wouldn't happen because obviously, uh, especially at this distance, like if if it was an object that was like back here and I wouldn't even notice. Like that's fine. I have no problem with that. But if it's something that's this close and it's a ground service I'm out for the walk vehicle, around. then I don't think that's okay. So that's ridiculous. I don't know why that happens. Also, now we're not using so jetways or I mean GSX jetways. I disabled it um, for this airport because it didn't work. Um, but if you do have them, um, th it also has this issue that if you look around, that the the, the jetway sometimes disappears. Um, as if it wasn't connected and if you go into the cockpit you actually also don't see the jetway connected to your plane I don't know there's some bug there I, I don't get it but it doesn't see like this doesn't happen with default jetways so why does it have to happen with GSX jetways I don't, I don't, I don't understand I don't know if you know what I mean um, but once you use GSX I think you'll, you'll understand what I'm trying to say I think okay so let's continue um, we're gonna go ahead and initialize A cars that's the first step we're gonna do. I also wish I wish that the uh, first officer would also click door page again so that it's gone. Uh, well, not gone, but you know that it, the system can take over automatically, so to speak. Um, that's okay. And a data request. Okay. Um, anybody online for us? No. Perfect preliminary performance determination. So we'll go departure performance. We'll also have we also have our weather. So Q and H is one zero one eight on all three set. And we're just going to calculate uh, some information. Two six right preliminary load sheet packs will stay on. Anti as we don't need. It's fairly warm, and uh, we will use force toga for now because the weather is still kind of looking not so good. Um, and then we'll calculate, see what flaps they take uh, give us. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because we're doing toga anyway, so we're going to go with flaps 1. We're going to calculate that. And uh, these are our speeds, so that all, that all checks out. We also would uh, check our charts, set those up, pin those, and then once that is done, um, the rest is pretty much complete. I'm going to go ahead and set up my lighting as I wish. Set that to the 12 o'clock position. I mean, it is daytime. It's just a bit cloudy, so that's why it's a bit dark but I don't need all the lighting right now. Okay, let's continue with the overhead. Boost supply, ground control. Checked, reset that, and check the date.
Okay. It's all good as well. Okay. Now we go to the MCDU, and we're going to start with cost index 0, 28,000 feet. Um, 17 degrees, that's plus 2, so that's minus 31. Our flight number is a Lufthansa, triple 2 alpha. Oops. Flight plan, departure, runway 26 right. Departure is Akini, 1 November. I'm back. No issues on the walk around. Arrival, ILS 25 left. We will expect at 25 left. And then via um, at group. Insert. For the alternate flight plan, Archer 25 left. Gerga, 1 November. Insert. And then into. One way two to right. A monarch to Charlie. Insert. Case of an engine failure after V1. We're going to plug in our procedure, which is just straight ahead for us. Um, we don't have any access to the real engine out procedure. I mean, I know Black Box has like this website, but I don't think he covers every single airport in the entire world. So <laughs> um, I'd rather have no information or all information, I guess. So um, let me just take a look at the chart. The 261. Then go to Radnav. And do we need anything here? No. It's an RNAV departure, nothing shown here, so we're going to keep that blank. Go to init, bravo, and um, pick our preliminary load sheet, which is 58.3. And we expect a fuel of 7.3. Alternate fuel is 2.1. Wind data request performance flaps 1, toga 5000, V speeds 122, 140, 140. And our current elevation here is uh, 1,480, so 1,500. We're going to go with 3,000, 3,000, and 3,000. Actually, for the engine out, uh, we actually want to check. That's going to be 4,000. Go. Um, progress. I'm going to take two six left in case of a return. The rest of this information is checked. Secondary flight plan, copy the active. And we'll go. go Delta Delta Mike. Hi, the security and safety check are all done. Are we good to start boarding? Yes, please. Okay. So what we'll do when she asks that, we'll go GSX. Request boarding. Boarding requested. That's another thing I don't like. I wish they would remove, they have an option to remove those voices because unrealistic. <laughs> Nobody's going to tell you, oh, boarding requested. I mean, I know, I just clicked it. Um, but whatever. And then we also have to go here. I think I just went away from that. And we're going to go fast this time. Load fast time. Now there's going to be a discrepancy with the doors and everything. But it's okay. Now you'll probably see the doors closed because GSX probably requested to close them or requested them. So we'll toggle them. They're probably closed now. Although, maybe not. No, okay, looks fine. We'll see. We'll, we'll monitor it. Um, yeah. Pilots but, boarding starting. 
<laughs> and this, that's the same other thing. Starting. I wish you could disable the the uh, the boarding of the crew has the crew and the cab. Okay, just be quiet. I wish you could also um, disable crew boarding and tenant boarding because that happens anyways. I mean, we're already here. We've been here for ten minutes, so that's unrealistic. Um, I don't think anybody wants that, right? And also, if you were to simulate crew boarding and passenger boarding, obviously you would let the cabin. Oh shit, they're already done. Okay. Um, even if the crew would board, you would still have like 10 minutes before passengers board. So just just remove that option entirely or have an option where you can disable. I think in, in PCD you actually were able to disable that. I'm not sure, but I think um, just disable crew boarding and all that stuff. That's, that's just so unrealistic, honestly. Okay, anyways, continue here. Rival, uh, two six left. Legendary performance, and uh, we're gonna go three thousand, three thousand, and four thousand. Previous, our wins and data, weather information is that light rain seventeen. So wow, humidity of one hundred percent, which which makes sense because it's raining. Um, one zero one eight. 280 at 5. Condition level probably going to be 60. And for in case you need to return for one way, 2. 2, two uh, sorry, 2 6 left. Oh, 2 6 left. We're going to go ILS category 1, 1 6, 1 zero. Okay. So here you can see how they, the doors close again. Phoenix. We're going to go ahead and open them up. Now GSX will, GSX will automatically close them. At least they should. It works with Phoenix when it comes to board doors and stuff. It just doesn't work with PMDG. Okay. Well, FMS is complete. We'll continue here. 1,000 initially. That all checks out. That's all good. Uh, filling is completed. Filling is completed. People signs and come on. And that's checked. Chin Tower, Lufthansa, Triple Two Alpha with information. Delta requesting IFR to uh, Berlin, please. Lufthansa, Triple Two Alpha, Chin Tower, Service. Start of the set move, clear to Berlin, Aerodrome, and the key one November departure, flight plan to move, climb by sit, flight of the 7 0, Rock Town. Clear to Berlin, the Akini 1 November departure, initial climb to flight level 7 0, and climb via the SID. Squawk 1000 for triple two alpha. Okay, so we got our load sheet, so we'll accept it. Fifty eight decimal three. It's checked. Thirty one decimal two. There's an extra one ton, that's checked. Air weight 654, light plan, distances, extra fuel on board and time is checked. Um, so now we can um, recalculate our performance data. We're gonna go to performance. And packs on Toga, yes, flaps one plus F. Final load sheet. Think. One one twenty one is the only change, and uh, down zero point two.
All right, so we just um, did our before start checklist. We got the beacon set, everything is set, everything is done. Lufthansa triple to alpha requesting pushback. Lufthansa triple to alpha requesting pushback. Lufthansa two 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 alpha, yeah, step by, traffic patch, you are Standing by, triple to alpha. Push back approved, facing north for 222 Alpha. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Pushing back. Lufthansa 2 Alpha Hotel, when 260 will be 6, and there is 5 levels to depart from the 260 right in the 6th Alpha 1. Starting engine 2. Okay. Starting engine one. Okay. Engine tower, hello, the Panzer 33 Alpha, radio check. Station calling, I read you first. Engine tower, Panzer 33 Alpha, Airbus A320, Panzer 205, information echo request zero. After start checklist. Anti ice. Off. Ecam status. Checked. Pitch trim. 27% set. Rudder trim. Neutral. After start checklist completed. Light control check. Ready. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. For Lufthansa 2 Alpha Charlie, A ball holding point. Lufthansa triple two Alpha requesting taxi. So two 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 Alpha taxi to enter November three via whiskey. November three via whiskey two for triple two Alpha. So two Alpha hotel when two six zero three six not come at two six five get the takeoff. Clear for takeoff around with left side. Right, Clear right alpha. side. Quick check. Pressure zero. Six right for Jupiter Alpha. Zulu, it's for Calvi via 207 Sierra departure route. The initial climb is 70 and walk 1000. Runway entry procedure. Take off runway, off runway confirmed. confirmed. Approach path clear of traffic. Clear for takeoff. Cabin crew be seated for takeoff. Line up checklist. Line up checklist. Take off runway. Confirmed. Runway. Two. Six. Right. Confirmed. CAS. EARA. Pax one and two. On. Line up checklist completed. Standard two one one requesting IFRS clearance for Munchen to Duffeldorf. Have information to the one board. Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust blue. Thrust set, 100 knots. Right. Our information echo will be updated and cleared for the stop fire. Keep one number departure. Climb via set, maintain flight level 170 and walk 1000. Positive climb. Gear up. 
Slam by a strip, flight level 7, 0, return to 687. Just the climb, climb, out of thrust. During Circle Zulu, request push and start. Push and push facing south during Circle Zulu. Just the command for 5 to clear text, and the number 4 via November. And again, push and push and push. Check to enter November 4 by November. Up zero. Speed check. Entry to November 4. Flaps up. Standard cross check. Passing flight Over level Unicom, zero, zero, five, seven. Five, seven. Five, seven. Five, seven. Der 46 to recover, Tower Taxi. Der 46 to recover, Taxi, holding point runway 25 left via Victor 1, Mike 7. Take the only point left via Victor 1 and Mike 7. 100 above. 200. Minimum. Continue. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. 5. Spoilers. No reverse engine 1 and engine 2. Decil. Seventy knots. Information echo request. Start up. Six one 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 nine. A problem. Radar. Hello. Information echo correct. Cleared to um. Or no, that's not Hogada. Hotel Echo Sierra Hotel. Super Swan November. Flight plan route. Climb five thousand feet. Squawk two zero seven six.
Bei Nettel für Charlie ist der schon der Eile, ist zu weit weit. Charlie 26, Charlie, Runway 259, Clear to Land, 329, Clear to Land, Runway Charlie. Kleiner 26 Charlie, wer geht left? The boarding requested. Um, what? <laughs> okay. That's what I mean. For one, the marshal are not doing a good job here, and two, why is this jetway coming our way? And three, the jetways. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things going on here. Um, not cool, but it is what it is. Like I said, GSX is not perfect. Um, most of this is uh, scenery dependent, so the marshaller, the jetways, um, where the vehicles spawn, that's all scenery dependent. But once that, once the scenery developers actually create um, a proper AVCAD file for all that stuff, there shouldn't be a problem. Parking checklist. Parking brake or chocks. Dead. Engines off. Wings light off. Fuel pumps off. Parking checklist completed. <laughs> and then you can see. <laughs> yeah. Definitely very strange what's going on here, but this is a good demonstration of what kind of problems this uh, GSI can have. But, um,. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, let me know what you guys think about GSX and FF the crew and all that stuff. Um, again, I think I mean I know what GSX can be like. I know what FF the crew can be like, and they're both amazing products in the P3D world. It's too bad that they've you know kind of hurt their reputation a little bit by releasing these two things. Yeah, a little bit too early, but it is what it is. Um, can only get better. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you all the next time. Peace.